Lemon Amiga presents A Play Child Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. This time we'll be checking out a public domain title. This is Transplant, developed by Jumping Jack Flash, whoever that was, and published on the front cover of Amiga Games magazine in 1992. The game can be played in one player mode or a two player simultaneous action. See from this introduction, we can play two players, one on the mouse and one on the controller, I think, and maybe even one on the keyboard, of which you get some massive power-ups later on. You can even press F1 to change our mode from teamwork mode to opposite two-player mode, where we can shoot each other in competition mode, or we can try one player mode the campaign and you can see the number of ships that we're going to get the rating of the ships and where we start on the level and you can also see a password system as well and you can enter a password at any point when you die and that will mean you can teleport yourself to any level in the game that you like This is me playing this game with two controllers. One of them is a gamepad, the other one is a joystick. And you can see the two player mode, split screen, it doesn't slow down, even with tons of action going on. And you can imagine playing this two players with a friend is awesome fun. And it's one of them party games. You can see it comes with some upgrades as well, so you can quickly upgrade your craft. And you can see even at this stage, there is plenty to do, plenty to shoot you down as well. Returning to the one player mode, you can see we start everything with very low, we start with three ships and we've got very low everything else. So let's check out the first level and for this I'll be using the also fire on Zipstick and of course also fire is an option on emulation these days but if you have an original controller you can simply hold down that fire button. So that's the very first level completed and we do get bonus credits for every single one of them and bonus just means credits earned on that level. There is actually a bonus accumulation mode, so it doesn't matter how quickly you shoot these down, there's no bonuses for time limits, there's no bonuses for taking enemies out in a particular order either, so you can see as we move through the stages, you can see in the middle of the screen there is a radar, and that will show us what is going on in the vicinity, and having the radar directly underneath the player in the middle of the screen, is a novel idea and as far as I know this is the first game to use it and there's been a public domain title it's surprising that this game does have some great effects and definitely a bit later on when we've got enemies buzzing around us everywhere those effects really start to build up so now we start with the easy levels of I think 200 in the game and right at this point it's just a matter of getting used to our ship and our firepower and the amount of firepower that it takes to knock out the enemies and it will introduce us to the enemies one by one and different types of ships and they all have different things going on they all do different things and on this particular level it's actually introducing us to the landmines or whatever that might be it's kind of a stationary turret and that will fire a bolt towards us on target so as long as we keep on the move it should be difficult for the enemies to shoot us 
and those bolts disappear as well a third of the way down that screen so as long as you're no higher than halfway up that screen you should be invulnerable to these shots at the moment although there will be many different sentry items a bit later on you can see we can press the f keys and we've just bought ourselves some more firepower by pressing f3 so every time we complete one of these missions we will get some kind of point score and you can see if the enemy shoots us i think if it shoots us one time at the moment then that's not too bad and we've upgraded our firepower so we've got the rapid fire but if the enemy shoots us twice or we get two shots on target or whatever that may be and i'm not quite sure if i've been hit once already i'm presuming so but it's a bit difficult when the shots disappear sometimes you don't know if you've been hit but on this early level i think you've got one shield and that means we can get hit once but everything else is very low so all you can do is persevere level by level and there it is one shot kill luckily we do have some lives and the one shot kill isn't too bad at this stage we can actually pull back on our controller and that gives us reverse fire as well so we can shoot forward and reverse out of the action and that means that we can face these mini sentry guns and these towers aren't too much of a problem as long as we get used to aiming for them on the very edge of the screen so they can't aim on target now have 23 credits in the bank and it's not really enough much although the ships are very inexpensive at this point only 10 credits for an extra ship so if you're struggling it's not too bad and you can see only just managed to get out of the way of those missiles and it's great that they do disappear and it's great that these ships are based very heavily on Star Wars TIE fighters that just gives away that this is a public domain release because full price releases probably couldn't get away with that and also when you get rid of the enemies the flying ones then the sentry turrets are left behind and those are stationary objects you can see on the radar at this point it doesn't take too long to build up our credits and so let's buy ourselves a shield so we can take two hits now hopefully so that means the first hit will be absorbed and then the second hit probably blows up and it's the same rule throughout the entire game and when you buy upgrades to the shields all that will do is add another hit to that counter so we still need to reverse out of the action and these particular ships the arrowhead ones will fly directly towards us so we can fly backwards from them and we also find the blue high power cannons and they fire the length of the screen and we also find the green spread cannons as well of which they will definitely become a bit more lethal later on for now the game is introducing us to these enemies level by level and on this particular level it shows us these particular asteroids even though asteroids are something which are descending to an earthly body affected by gravity so these aren't actually asteroids this is just space debris but for the sake of this we'll call them asteroids and of course they wobble around constantly so if you are in line with that wobble you'll get blown up again that's not too bad on these early levels level 14 of 200 but what that does is it introduces those elements to the player and it introduces those minefields as well because you will have to get your way through minefields and you can see the sentry guns have to rotate onto target every single one of those will have the same behavior and sometimes if they are rotating they are completely safe Let's just upgrade our shield again so now it's average and look at that even from the get-go we've taken one bullet and it's really unfortunate that our ship doesn't flash 
when we get hit and then it registers that impact and we don't get a sound effect either but what we do get is some chunky sound effects of things exploding and now that it's given us some minefields to get through that adds another element to the game so the first element is the asteroid field the second element is the attackers and the homing arrowheads and things like that and the third element is the minefields and it will throw different combinations of those together as we move through the game and the action will become packed later on by the time we get to level 100 but by this stage it's a real joy just to mow through these and look at that taking some hits there and that's disconcerting but all we need to do is to wait for that thing to start rotating by moving away from the screen and having done that it won't be able to lock on to our target these silver asteroids don't really pose too much of a threat as long as you can deal with those and what I like to do is to create a space in the very middle of the radar you can see create a free space where nothing is attacking us and hopefully then we can deal with whatever is attacking in that free space without getting attacked ourselves unfortunately the enemy has a way of dealing with that and that prospect is cancelled out now by a new enemy that's the homing missile launchers the green homing missile launchers look very much like corn on the cob only the green and what they will do is fire green missiles towards us and they will fly around us and home in on our location so we can evade those if we are on the move we can also shoot those down as well which is a godsend and definitely we can't shoot down the cannon fire from those turrets which is something to be aware of so we can shoot down missiles and asteroids and ships but we can't shoot down the cannon fire and the most dangerous thing on this particular level is shot into a corner by those homing missiles and when we are reversing we only have three seconds to line ourselves up with the missile before it collides in towards us otherwise with these guns you can simply step to the side and there's no strafe in this game but we can move to the side away from them and that's not too much of a problem at the end of every level it will give us the opportunity to relax in the shop and there is no time limit in these levels and if you find yourself with a fast heartbeat you can relax and take a deep breath whilst you sat there on the shop screen and you can take all the time in the world to decide your upgrades and at this point in the game I definitely recommend for newbies to increase their shield power as much as possible as early as humanly possible and that means you can take a few knocks and of course try to stay out of trouble so shield power is on average at the moment so we should be able to take two or three hits now without getting blown up on this level it introduces us to yet another new enemy that's this one and these I like to call the bombers and those heavy bombers will also fire missiles towards us and I think there are homing missiles so it's like the other green homing missiles only if they aren't as accurate and in order to stop them from appearing you have to blow up the bombers so that's another enemy there are maybe 15 different enemies in this game maybe 20 of them and you'll definitely encounter those early on and it looks like on this particular level it's another minefield and that's given away by the fact that there's nothing moving on the radar and so we can simply take our time and those green homing missiles will burn out eventually so yet again if we are on the move which we'll definitely have to be later on we can simply outrun those missiles and hopefully at this stage we can take our time and shoot them down you might notice we don't get any score whatsoever in this game and you don't get any instrument panel or anything like that we'll just have to memorize how many lives we've got 
from the shop screen and we don't get any score all we get is a password if we end up dying we can enter the password in to continue and that will also preserve all of the weaponry that we had when we died it will give us three more lives back and it will even give us the credits that we had when we died back just by entering that password system at the beginning of the game so it means if you can get all the way up to level 100 you can well if you die you can enter that password in and it will give us all the ships flexibility firepower and sealed strength that we could manage to get from the time before and the cash as well and so that's fantastic it gives us infinite continues in this game and if you want to continue straight away if you die all you have to do is to press fire and that will give you some extra lives which you had at the very start of the level that you died on so let's give ourselves an extra life now let's put ourselves up to two and you saw those brain drones whatever they were those are definitely lethal and we'll have to watch out for those from now on about this game said that the graphics were nothing to write home about there is a blank background and the stars appear to be moving on a play field directly under us and they're not really stars in that case because they're moving adjacent to us so maybe that's just space dust and the very centre of the screen it shows lots of dots moving around so if this was an AGA full price game there would be something in the background like project x where we get a nice galaxy in the background and that will give us almost a, a third layer of scrolling even though the radar itself doesn't scroll and you can see at this point the enemies do gang up towards us so we'll have to turn around very quickly if we want to take those out and the flexibility means that we can turn around much more quickly we have minimum flexibility at the moment that means we can only turn around very slowly so we're gonna have to upgrade that as we continue in the game right now it's not too important but a bit later on it definitely will be so flexibility is at its lowest and we're saving up our cash we can't afford much and we could spend loads of cash on our lives but there's no point in doing that because we've got infinite continues and so if we started a level with three lives and lost all of our lives upon it we will continue with three lives if we got to a level with just one life and died whilst we were upon it then we'll continue with just one life so that's definitely interesting it will continue the game from the number of lives that you had when you started that level so if you had eight lives and you wasted them all on a particular level give you eight lives back so that's pretty strange to find in a game but it is there in this particular one so now you can see the bombers are now lobbing out homing missiles there are now silver homing missiles which are placed on the level at random and they will track us down and there are green homing missiles as well as the red firepower coming out of those enemies so you can see we're on level 34 at the moment that's the password and you can enter that in on the keyboard when you start up the game and otherwise if you want to continue from that level from the point where you left off you can just press fire here in one player mode and that will take us straight back there again so let's just do that let's just play that level again and die straight away hopefully it's given us the three lives back and as long as we get off this level it means we can get further in the game sadly we do not know who wrote this game it's jumping jack flash so this could have been a bedroom coder who sent it into a magazine to be published and for public domain it stands up don't forget public domain 
at its height was incredible. We got Speed Racer FX, and we got Sneech, and we got Squirts Tanks, and Alien Fish Finger, and lots and lots of public domain games, Screech, and things like that. Tons and tons of them which were almost as good as the commercial releases. And definitely one of the comments on the Lemon Amiga database about this game was the fact that it was, or it seemed, slightly more playable or more accessible than some of its contemporaries. And for that we're looking at Amnios and Awesome and Blastar and Photon Storm, all of which we've reviewed already. And we're reviewing this game because a, I forgot that we haven't reviewed a PD game this series, of which there should also always be one, and B, we didn't cover a 360 degree shooter this series, of which there should always be one, so that's why we're covering this this series, I completely forgot, this is definitely the last game I'll be narrating for the series, so I've no idea when this is going to come out, probably towards the end of it but this was a request by Thrashy who's been following us online for uncountable years and um, as a mega fan I don't like to let anybody down so he said what about this game and I said alright then I played it and I found that it was fairly fun but what I did find is the later levels are even more fun and the early levels definitely play differently to the later levels, which we shall see later on in this review. It took me maybe an hour or so to record it all in one day, and I had maybe three or four goals of this. And you can see this is a live play where I died and continued. And around about level 35, it seems to reach a difficulty spike, and that's where most players put the game down and write the game off as being playable but slightly humble in the graphics department. Not really much fun. However, if you can get as far as this then you'll find a new enemy. These are the Galaxians and they will swoop in from the corners and from the edge of the screen and they will track us down, they will home in on our last known position and they will fire a range of missiles. Well they're not really homing missiles, they're just ordinary missiles and they will fire them towards us. So the Galaxians are going to be a problem in the game from now on. And it makes these stupid TIE fighters and these alien discs and everything else feel like a pushover after we've got through the Galaxians. But as you can see, their firepower does mount up. So even the easiest enemies that don't take the least amount of firepower at this stage, well, we've got double spread and definitely upgrading it to the double spread will help us but we definitely need more than that later on and we can only just survive with this at the moment thanks to having all those shields and another fantastic thing about this game that I just want to mention is the fact that the shields recharge every single level so if you have three shields like I think we have at the moment then they'll recharge and so if you get hit three times or two and a half times whatever it is and then continue on to the next level they will recharge so we've got three hits back again that means that we still have to consider our lives once we've been hit twice but it just means that those carry over we don't have to conserve ourselves and sometimes we can wade into the action Now upgraded everything, we're now on low flexibility which means that we get to manoeuvre a bit quicker and I think we've got auto, well we have got auto fire on but if you upgrade the firepower to a fourth level like this then that gives us a rapid fire so we're still on dual fire but it actually increases it to rapid and by this point in the game it's beginning to show us 
what the second tactic is and from now on we'll have to play using that second tactic that is to stay on the move so the first part of the game you more or less ducking in and out of minefields and dodging little lasers and shooting down little boulders and that's not too bad but by this stage the game is saying hold on a minute this game is a bit more than you expected and we're not just going to give you an easy time of the same old waves repeated infinitum no instead we're going to go through it and throw more and more at you so we've now improved the firepower you can see we've spent all that cash on improving it now we're on good good so i think that means that we've improved it six times that means we've got triple firepower and if we get triple firepower and the next one is rapid fire i'm not sure whether this is the rapid triple and one quirk about this is of course you only get the triple on the very edge of the screen and close up towards us it means we get three times as much firepower or at least more than that twice as much at close quarters so we can shoot enemies down better and quicker at close quarters so we've got an average shield good firepower low flexibility but we're gonna have to upgrade that pretty soonish because as the game goes on definitely you'll need to upgrade those and you'll definitely investigate and learn tactics new tactics of how to deal with the enemies and the old handbrake turn and sweep and clear method is definitely one of the most fun things to do because don't forget if the enemies got missiles they will fire on your last known location so if you turn around 180 degrees and then you turn around and do a handbrake reverse turn by another 90 degrees then you should be facing the enemy but turn to the side and that means we can turn to the side and shoot the enemies as they strafe beyond us and that kind of handbrake J turn is fantastic in this game once you get the power ups to be able to pull it off uh, at the moment we've got triple fire and i think that goes up to maybe five way fire at the top i definitely know from the two player mode that you can have side shot um of course once you've got triple or quadruple or even five way forward fire and the side shot you can imagine this game is absolutely awesome Speaking of awesome, one of the comments on Lemon Amiga said that this was a lot better than awesome because the sprites are a lot smaller and in Amniosum, and Awesome and even Blastar they are huge great big sprites and if you can make those tiny and in the middle of the screen it means we've got more visible screen area around us that means we can anticipate things all the quicker and that really does matter when we're motoring through the game at high speed and flexibility i'm not sure whether that moves us any more quickly i think it does and we can also turn more quickly as well you can see we're on level 70 and you expect by this stage the enemies to come thick and fast and yes they can still build up around us if we stop in one place so the idea is to look at the radar in the very middle of the screen and ignore the enemies completely aim for the radar and aim for those white dots and when you hear those enemies exploding the white dot in front of us will disappear and that means we can track the enemies down and it's now a seek and destroy mission so a seek and destroy tactics definitely coming into play at this stage and amongst the other 360 shooters you might remember we've already covered seek and destroy where we had a helicopter we had to fly around the landscape blowing everything up you might also remember the chaos engine which is another top-down 360 degree shooter and games like fire or cop as well that we haven't reviewed but there are a rake of these on the amiga 
most of them are a good chunk of them are public domain and for my money definitely Photon Storm was one of the most fun and this game doesn't become the most fun until maybe level 80 of which we're rapidly approaching at the moment and then it really does start to get fun and with the sound effects blasting away as well One of the great tactics that I find seems to work for me is to sway left and right and that's kind of a dodging tactics and that means that if any of the enemies are firing towards us we should hopefully avoid that fire and again I'm looking at the center of the radar to see for any clear areas moving into those and then tackling the enemies head on as we find them on the very edge of the map and we fly towards them at the moment we're not turning round into the enemy's firepower we're simply strafing the enemies using the radar in the very centre and you'll get used to staring at the radar and using your peripheral vision to check out the enemies and see what's going on and definitely if you wrap around the top of the screen then you'll find the enemies again will turn around and head south in the opposite direction and they will track you down just like this so what we're going to do is strafe them and we're going to turn around at the last moment just before the enemies have fired just like this that means we can sweep them off the level Every level is completely different, or at least different enough, and the levels will tax us in different ways, and it will throw more and more ships towards us in waves now, because on the early levels what happened was, everything on the level spawned and generated at the very beginning of it, and now that we're moving on through these levels, what you'll find is the initial enemies will spawn at the start, the initial asteroids and the initial mines and then after you've killed a few things you'll get a second wave spawning in and that really could be anything and the second wave usually spawns in after maybe the first 60 seconds or so on a level so it means you get attacked by a small group of enemies first of all and then if you linger on you'll find something else will start to dive bombers and then maybe some army missiles will spawn and start tracking us down and if there are any big enemies like those brain things which remind me of the things in Lornatron then unfortunately they will be hanging around from the beginning of the level so what I'm doing is getting rid of it, all the periphery and these asteroids take hardly any firepower to defeat whatsoever and then if I fall over those brain things I can shoot them hopefully from the top of the screen and then run away very quickly to save us from getting hit definitely looks like we've got the three-way rapid fire and the expensive power-ups at this stage means we'll have to get through quite a lot of levels to get further in the game and you can see as long as we stay on the move it means the enemies won't be able to target us unless we stop and sometimes we can outrun that firepower 
So at the moment I'm heading through the minefield into the clear area and if you find any of these brain things it's definitely best to lay into them if they've got a back towards us and having the back towards us definitely means they are vulnerable otherwise we are very much vulnerable to them. You can see we've got an improved shield so hopefully we can now take three or four hits without getting blown up and that's fantastic because it means we can afford to take a few chances and at this stage in the game the levels are massive but at this stage they actually start to get through them a lot quicker because wave after wave of enemies is fine but now that we've got this firepower we can wade into wave of a wave of enemies just like this we can take them out and that means that the levels are over even more sooner and if we die we can just start that level all over again and continue and if we do get far in the game and earn some money we can always buy ourselves some extra lives instead of the power up and continue that way but sometimes one of the things about this game is getting through the levels on one life now because if you die and have to restart if you had one life before then you can have one life now so you can have to get through the whole thing on one life and then it gives you the next password to the next level and that can be very difficult but it can also be very challenging and rewarding as well if we do manage to get through everything on one life and don't forget if we have loads and loads of cash we can also buy ourselves extra lives when the next level starts and that should mean we can get through it and definitely if you're going to be approaching some of those brain creature things definitely buy yourself an extra life before the level starts and that just means if we get blown up we should have enough remaining to survive through to the end of it could only find two scores for this game the ever reliable Amiga Power gave it four stars out of five that's 80% and for a public domain title that's definitely as far as I'm concerned deserved and again Photon Storm I think was another PD title which did it better and we could use the mouse to turn around as well so it was even more frantic but doing this with the controller seems to have a different reward and it's not as easy to pull off those frantic hit and run maneuvers so if you're going to plan a maneuver it's best to do that in advance so Amiga Power gave it 80% and the current Lemon Amiga score is 82% which gives this an average score of 8 out of 10 This is as far as I ever got with the game, but definitely the split screen mode, two player simultaneous action needs to be applauded. Definitely the small sprites and well, I think the firepower could have been upgraded a lot sooner. Maybe by this point we could have even had one shot of rear firepower and definitely in Amnios we managed to get eight way firepower eventually so that we could tackle things from any direction and with Blastar we got homing missiles so that helps us to defend ourselves against things and we do have homing missiles in this game unfortunately we can't fire them so it's pretty similar to Photon Storm where we've got three way firepower and we can't unfortunately turn around as quick because we're using a controller and that's good because I don't think this game will be controllable if you could turn around as quick as you could in Photon Storm but you can see real live footage of me working through these levels and getting through those minefields and of course you can't stop, you can't consider what you're doing you just have to look forward at that radar 
and use your peripheral vision to see what's going on give things a swipe and hopefully you can swipe things out like a cat playing with a ball of string you just swipe it and hopefully as a passing glance you should be able to take out most of the enemies on that kind of diagonal swipe maneuver So even though the commenters said that this has ugly graphics, I definitely don't think these graphics are ugly. In fact, if you compare these to something like Deluxe Gallagher, then you find the same reds and greens and a similar colour scheme on Deluxe Gallagher, which is of course a classic, and these ships are flying around. So it's a bit like Deluxe Gallagher, only the ships are flying around us, and this is as much as I know, as good as Deluxe Galaga, although of course we don't get asteroid fields, well we do get asteroids moving around us, we don't get memory mazes and things like that, and at the moment we're going to improve our flexibility. And now that we've got good flexibility finally it means that we can attack these levels head on, and I think it would have been great to even start the game on these levels to show us the true colours that the game is meant to offer because this is the game now from now on. The rest of the 200 levels are this level of mayhem only it gets more difficult as it goes on and you will have to have faster and faster reactions and you can see we're down to our last enemy, there you go. So the game finally after level 100 becomes a whole new character and everybody who's managed to get that far on the Lemon Amiga database has rated this game 9 out of 10 and it loses a point unfortunately for one or two things that it could have had and definitely the lack of score is a bit of a problem and things like that but apart from that everything moves fast and fluid I think these graphics are great for a public domain title quality graphics and I've definitely seen worse than this on a public domain effort and the music on the tile screen is good the sound effects are good although it doesn't have in-game music which might have got pretty repetitive I've no idea but it could have done with some hardcore rave at this point and that would have been great and of course Speed Racer FX and things like that came with hardcore rave so this game isn't perfect but it deserves 9 out of 10 because it doesn't slow down even with all this action going on and well I'm playing this on a standard O30 but it's emulating a standard triple O as far as I know so hopefully this thing will continue on and continue on and you can see it's not jerky it's smooth all the way through Thank you Thrashy for recommending this game, it's the first time I've ever seen it on the day that I recorded this footage, I had a few warm up plays and then I set off and all the rest of it you can see for yourself. Like most people I died on something like level 15 or 20 and wrote this game off as being a good try and I didn't really appreciate the subtleties which only emerge after you get further in the game. So having done that I like to get through the game as far as humanly possible so that I can rate it and it means I can give it a play guide and that's what we've done at the moment. So this is level 101 or 111 or 111 so that's what we've got up to and if you want to enter that password then that will give you the money, the lives and the firepower that I had when I died and you can continue from where I last left off and experience the mania for yourself. So thank you once again and I'll see you again in another player guide sometime soon. Thank you.